What's up, people? I hope everybody's having a great time doing that Memorial Day thing. Now, I know that you have your hot dogs and hamburgers up on the grill. It's also a time to uh, remember those that are fallen. So uh, we want to do a quick shout out. Uh, yeah, I, I said we, and I'll tell you why in one second. But uh, we want to thank everybody for their service. And um, we're going to start the show. We're going to do it a little differently. And this is out to one of my uh, my best mates. We've known each other for 23 years. And uh, he said, why don't you do a podcast for my birthday? So here it is, sucker. Happy birthday, damn it. This is Jason with a special guest coming soon. And this is the Hi-Fi Podcast. <laughs> And welcome back to the Hi-Fi Podcast. I am glad you're here enjoying the rest of your Memorial Day weekend here. Um, besides uh, celebrating those that have fallen and celebrating my best friend, the Meathead's birthday. By the way, Hugh Anderson, that's him. That's my best mate. I've known him for the past 23 years. And as I said, he's a whiner. So I decided to dedicate at least one podcast to him. And I could not do this by myself. I needed help. And not just for this episode, but hopefully for many episodes to come. I would like you to be nice and kind to welcome the newest member of the Hi Fi family from the band Millennial Sun. This is Catherine. Catherine, say hello to the people out there. Hey, everybody. My name is Catherine. I like to party. By party, I mean full caffeinated coffee in bed by 10 p.m. I'm um, excited to be here, excited to be a part of the Hi Fi family. And, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun this episode and hopefully more to come, like uh, my buddy Jason said. Yes, exactly. Because, you know, I do promise you the goods, don't I? So uh, we're going to start off this episode with a band from the South Florida area that Catherine did introduce me to. This is uh, Behind the Flame by Johnny Two Chords. And we're gonna let Catherine do her first intro for the for the High Pie podcast. Go ahead, Catherine. All right, thanks, Jason. Uh, so yes, this song, this band is called Johnny Two Chords. They're a Miami band, skate punk. And uh, this is from their EP called Single-Handedly Changing Nothing. Is available on Spotify, Apple Music, most major platforms where you might want to get your music. And um, they are going to be playing a show called Punk Prom at American Rock Bar in Deerfield, which we'll get more into a little later, that has a lot of other really great South Florida punk bands and a lot of cool contests and things going on. Um, So with no further delay, this is Behind the Frame by Johnny Two Chords.
From their 2017 offering, single-handedly changing nothing. Um, I believe that is the title of my next autobiography. That was Johnny Two Chords, <laughs> Julius, Dave, and Jimmy. And um, I, I'm sorry that I'm uh, thrown off a little bit. It's just I heard that we're doing contests now. So uh, what was that about, Catherine? Contest? No, didn't you say contest? Well, the for the the punk prom, they have contests there. Oh, thank People God! Okay. For that. Okay. Get I, out of here with that nonsense. Oh, thank God! I would say I'm I'm broke. I just moved. <laughs> I, I just moved, so I I have no money right now. I I can give you some swizzles. <laughs> I can give I can give out swizzle sticks and ramen noodles. That's about it right now. So maybe a solid pat on the back. Yeah, um, in this climate, I, I need to make sure that's that that needs to be consented first before I pat anybody on the back. <laughs> uh, so, what did you think about the song? I think it was cool. It was a great start of the show. Angst, anger, and a lot of rebellion—the three things that you need in a great punk song. Um, yeah, I. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go. You go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's funny, and I'm sure the band might cringe a little <laughs> when I say this, but for some reason, the very beginning of the song, it reminded me of the beginning of Boys of Summer. The <laughs> it old did. It did. song. Yes, and it, it was um, more like it's the cover from uh, the Atari that came out, I guess, probably in early 2000s. But yeah, just like something about it with the guitarist, and I'm like, mm, and I'm like, they're gonna be so annoyed that I say this, but I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I'm a person of the people. I got to speak the truth. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I thought. Um, also, I mean, the instrumentals in general throughout the song reminded me of some early 2000s alternative, which is some of my favorite music. And, um, you know, if you listen to Millennial Sun, you can kind of get a, a taste for that as well. Uh, the vocals and drums, I thought that those were the most punk parts about this song. They really added that edge. So it kind of had that early 2000s alternative um, vibe to it, but the vocals and drums, you know, the kind of uh, gritty vocals and like, you know, the really quick, hard hitting punk drums, um, you know, really added to it and, and punked it up a bit. Um, but in general, overall, the feeling that I got from the song was, you know, kind of inspirational. Like, as far as just like the feeling of like, it gets you pumped up, you know, like, all right, all right I'm ready to overcome something, you know, and uh, just like go out there and get her done, you know. Understood, which is why I had to go ahead and pick the next one on this one. So then we go out and then you get smacked in the face. You, you need to cry a little bit. And so <laughs> I went ahead and picked out uh, the next song, which is a band that I've played on here many times. Also from Miami, they are A Starry Night. And that's Michael and Norman. And we have been friends and collaborators um, they've been helping me out. I've helped them out. I saw them uh, the past two times, uh, last time in January, up at Crowbar in Tampa. And this time, they have a new single out, and we'll be playing that soon, probably the next uh, few episodes. But I wanted to come back and do something that my friend would enjoy. This is from their 2018 offering called Midnight Conversations. And again, the song that they have out now is called as if you were dead um but we we're gonna we're gonna hold back because if we put in all the songs we wanted to this is going to be a joe rogan podcast it's going to be four hours and nobody wants to do that (laughs) (laughs) so here to play once again this is a starry night the song is called sunday queen here what you do it Catherine. oh um, on the High Five podcast. There you go. You're kicking ass. <laughs>
Conversations. That was Sunday Queen from A Starry Night. And once again, there will be an up in our neck of the woods come July 17th with DJ Azzy and Passages. But now enough of that because with Sunday Queen, I have to deal with the queen of hi-fi right now. That is Catherine. And um, Catherine, your song's up next. It's all right. Um, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. I want. I wanted to talk about the the, the song a little bit. Okay. Uh, should we start over or should I just? Nope. Keep going. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> uh. So this song, I think it kind of goes without saying, but uh, total the Cure vibes, and um, you know, Jason, probably you long term high fires will know that he geeks out about this band quite a bit. Yes, I do. And it, <laughs> is a huge fan so um you know a lot of great songs from this band uh the it just has the classic what i think is really uh you know something that you see in a lot of solid new wave bands and songs is that vocal reverb um you know that kind of gives it that echoey kind of spoopy type vibe um and also for all of those people out there who watch south park or have seen it it always kind of makes me think of, you know, the golf kids and, uh, you know, them doing their little dance. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, pull out your phone, Google South Park golf kids dancing, and there's a GIF. And, uh, you know, you just play the song and watch it, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, now is that sort of... Uh, also, that, I thought, like... You, huh? is, is that sort of like how you're supposed to play Pink Floyd at the beginning of Wizard of Oz? Is that will that have that kind of feel too? I don't know. I haven't heard about that. You never heard about but that? Yeah. That's not, that sounds trippy. Maybe it, it, you might need a possible chemical or natural aid uh, in that. I've done both. I mean, it's more interesting. <laughs> it. It's more interesting. I mean, I guess know. Pink Floyd, though. You know, you, you kind of have to assume there's going to be some sort of uh, quote unquote elevation of the mind uh, being done some way. Just lots of transcendental medication. medication. <clears throat> wow, was that a Freudian slip? Transcendental meditation. That's all you need. Mm, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, like, I thought it'd be cool, like, this song, like, I, at first I was almost thinking, like, this song with, like, a Tool video. You know, have you ever seen, like, a Tool music video? 
they're super cool. I was thinking like a claymation tool type music video like to this song. Like because it's almost kind of like like creepy but like cool and like almost a little epic. Like so I just felt like a cool like claymation video that you're just like what just happened? But at the same time, like I totally get it. It's super deep, you know. I felt like that would go with the song. Yes, <laughs> I'll dig that. I'll, 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 I'll dig that with, with that. So now you've you have you've talked about it, and we're now getting to it. Okay, I, I know you want to go ahead and talk about your song "Millennial Sun," up, up, down, down. Which when we first met. Uh, again, I do apologize. I thought it was a wrestling reference. Um, anybody that it goes on YouTube, up, up, down, down, was a um, a thing from the New Day, and so I'm like, okay, this song is about this. But no, it's one of those things where, if I hear it correctly, it's about really trying to just beat up against the wall and trying to just make it through the next day, and how a daily, um, a, a daily in the life of anybody in that situation goes through. Is that correct? Is that was, I was somewhat. Yeah. Around? I mean, you know, th this song, um, you know, me and the band, we kind of laugh about it. This is actually probably one of our most popular songs, but, um, I actually, I wrote it in about five minutes, um, by myself before I met the band acoustically. And, uh, it was through a really chaotic time in my life. I was, uh, it was before I was diagnosed with bipolar two and GAD, which is generalized anxiety disorder. And so at that point, I didn't know what was going on. I was um, having a lot of panic attacks and in a lot of turmoil, having these breakdowns. And uh, it was just a really strange time in my life. So after this big panic attack I had, I got up and I just scribbled down the lyrics to the song. And I wanted to write music for it that was so quickly changing, like the way my emotions and you know my anxiety were changing. So really, I really wanted it to match the lyrics of the song that showed the chaos in my head, uh, which is actually a reference to another song that called Chaos in My Head. <laughs> and I wrote that around the same time as well. Uh, but it was just kind of funny because once you, you know, really reflect on the lyrics, it's very clear that it's, you know, about this anxiety and even, you know, the bipolar with, you know, not knowing, you know, when you're going to have this next breakdown or, or what your, your mind is going to do to you sometimes. And, uh, you know, so it is kind of an interesting way the song was written. So once I met the band in 2015, it was one of the first songs they really picked up on and uh, we jammed on it. And uh, it's like our most punkiest songs. So, uh, you know, I think people are really drawn to it. It's high energy and it's fun. And I think on some level, you know, everyone can relate to that, having those times in your life where, you know, you don't know if you're going to have a good day or a bad day, if, you know, something's going to, you know, the shit's going to hit the fan or not. And, um, you know, and that's what we really try to do in our band, you know, is try to relate to people and, you know, let them know, hey, like, I got through this, you can get through it, and we're all in this together. Exactly. Um, she said it better than I did, but of course she wrote it. Um, this is Up, Up, Down, <laughs> Down by Millennial Sun here on the Hi-Fi Podcast.
And that was Up, Up, Down, Down by Millennial Sun here on the Hi-Fi Podcast. And it is so much fun to actually be able to bounce ideas and stuff. So, again, excuse it. It's our first time. We, I'm, I'm learning. She's learning. But let me tell you something. What I'm feeling right now is a spark here. I, I, I feel it. It's good. I, I feel good. You feel good. She feels good. Let's get on with the call to action. And you know what time it is. If you like what we're playing or if there's some songs that you want on the Hi-Fi podcast or any bands that you want us to see. And now, since I'm in St. Pete and you're in Fort Lauderdale, correct? Yep. Yep. See? She's perfect. Perfect talker. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, she's in Fort Lauderdale, so... If there's any shows in that area that you want us to check out, please do not hesitate to contact us at HiFiFlorida at gmail.com. We have two, that's two, Facebook pages that you can check us out on. And also, you can flip us a little line and DM us, DM us, DM us at HiFiFlorida or also Twitter us at HiFiFlorida as well. And um, we're going to go straight into the next tweet, song. Tweet. What's that? <laughs> what did you say? Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. See, see, see. see. I'm adding some flavor. <laughs> You're cutting out. I'm cutting out? Yeah, oh, there you are. See. All right, for, for all you people. Tweet, tweet. There you go. See, now for all, for all of you, um, see. I'm probably going to, I'm not going to cut this out just for an example that we've been doing stuff like this for like the past hour. So we're going to put this on Patreon probably. So you can hear all of our foibles. It's great shit. Really. I, I think you'll appreciate it. Um, <laughs> the next song is we're going back up to my neck of the woods to St. Pete. And this is a band also that I've played on a couple of times. I like them very much. It has a nice, um, anarchic type Joy Division sound to it, which I know my boy Hugh loves, one of his favorite bands. This is Joy Eater. This is from their EP, and this is Breaking. That is Jack on the voice, Laura on the guitars, Christian on the bass, and Tim on the drums. This is Breaking by Joy Eater here on the Hi-Fi Podcast.
breaking a nice little two minute ditty. One of the things we do love about punk. Yeah, they're in, they're out, they're done. Message sent. And that was Joy Eater on the Hi Fi podcast. Catherine, how did you feel about that one? Yeah, I like that song. Um, I, uh, you, you might know what this is. They kind of have like a cool vocal effect on this song. Um, it was kind of like an old radio type vocal effect. You know what that is? I have no clue, but it's probably, he probably recorded it on mono. <laughs> And then put them and put. I, like, I try to sound. I, I try to know what a lot of these effects are, like the pedals. Like I think there was one song in here. I don't know who's out to it yet, but uh, you know, like the the bass pedal is cool. Now he's the same one my bassist uses, but you know, like you talk to other musicians and you try to sound like you know what you're talking about. But do any of us really know what we're talking about, Jason? Um, no, not at all. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was cool, though, that kind of effect. I thought, you know, made it fun. Um, and then parts of the song, uh, you know, definitely let us know in the comments what you think about this, because I, I could on. be crazy, but parts of the song kind of reminded me of At The Drive-In. Um, you know the band At The Drive-In? Oh, yes, At The Drive-In, and then they yeah, turned from like... Yeah, it is like kind of like, because of, you know, the more like spoken, shouted melody, um, but I mean, obviously, at the drive is a little more intense than uh, Joy Eater. But you know, even certain like instrumental parts and breaks, I was just I, I was just listening at the drive yesterday, so that might have influenced that. But um, you know, I was kind of getting a little bit of at the drive vibes, which I, you know I, I actually enjoy quite a bit. I think they're a pretty cool band. Yeah, they are. And then when they split and did the Sparta um, Mars Volta thing, that was a whole. Mm-hmm. A whole nother plane that they went into. So, and what I hear is not only is at the drive-in coming back, but also Mars Volta. So I am definitely Dang. awaiting that. So that was Joy Eater with Breaking, and now we're going to go ahead with Catherine's choice, which was uh, Death Lottery. Which I first of all, for, first off, never research certain words i found this out (laughs) death lottery um when when you look it up does not want to ever let you want to play a lottery and then win because all you saw all i saw was people you know getting totally broke afterwards people dying after they get the lottery you know somebody overdosing because they won the lottery so if, if there's a lesson boys and girls stay poor Basically, just stay poor. <laughs> so that was that was the one thing. Also, at the same time, just uh, this is a word from your Uncle Jay. Um, don't look up lottery or death lottery. And also, don't look up any recipes for um, eggplant. No eggplant recipes. Don't just um, just don't do it because it, it will scare you. Um, anyhow, <laughs> tell us about more about death lottery and the wrong side of the sun, please. Yeah, so uh, Death Lottery, they're a pretty cool band. Um, and if you look them up on Instagram, that's where I, I uh, you know, I was talking to them. Actually, um, uh, on Instagram, bandwave.mia, uh, Abby, and I'm going to give her a few shout-outs, Jason, but uh, she actually linked me to this playlist um, that, uh, you know, I discovered them on and reached out. And it's funny because Death Lottery, their little icon is... Uh, uh, the the king of the hill dude and they kind of did some editing on him and it's, it's kind of funny but so there's some pretty cool dudes they talked to and um the song wrong side of the sun was uh one of a couple songs that poked out at me there's this other song trespass um that i also liked and i, I liked that because it was about uh trespassing on the beach during like hurricanes mm-hmm. and it's always fun because you know we do all florida bands here and so uh, it's fun to have a Florida band that talks about kind of like Florida things, you know, that you, you wouldn't really relate to as much in another state. So it kind of it contributes to that camaraderie of all being from Florida. Um, so this song is off their split seven inch. It's, uh, they, they did this, uh, this split seven inch with a California band called Hardship Anchors. Okay, that's really fun. Band camp. So they're from Fort Lauderdale as well. And, uh, yeah, so how about we play the song? And with no more trepidation, this is Death Lottery, Wrong Side of the Sun, by us here at the Hi-Fi Podcast. (laughs) 
on Saturday. That's going to be in Fort Lauderdale with the anti-faces and real people. That's Johnny, Cassidy, Jojo, and since it is South Florida, Jesus, that was Death Lottery and the song Wrong Side of the Sun. Uh, Usually we would be doing concert listings. Um, Anybody who knows me knows that I just got through moving and um, we are not as prepared as we want to be, but we're still professional as we'd like to be. So we will be doing, unless you have any concert listings, then we're going to go and um, we promise next week we will have concert listings. We'll be back full force, 100%. And you can always look at our Hi-Fi page to look at all the cool bands that will be playing, not just throughout this week, but hopefully the next couple of weeks as well. So we're going to go into the last of it here. And um, we are going with Ninth Evolution. Um, I put this one in here because it reminds me of the clubs that Hugh and I used to go to. Um, DNA and The Visage and Empire. And well, they went to 911. I had a strange aversion to 911 back in the day just because there was way too many... Um, what's the word I'm going for? Uh, skinheads. That's the word I'm going for. Skinheads that were there. And I knew there were, I knew Sharpies, but you know, when you're drunk, you could never tell who to say hi to. So I always refrained to uh, go to 911. But this is actually a song from their 2015 offering called Kill Scream. They are in the studio now. We're hoping for a 2019 release. But you can always check out the Ninth Evolution fan page. They did a crazy version of Cry Little Sister from the Lost Boys soundtrack, which I think um, you, you just need to check out. So this is, well, actually his name is Nicholas Whitfield, but the band that he is basically everything of is Ninth Evolution. This is Agro Political here on the Hi-Fi Podcast.
2015 album Kill Switch, which if you can find on Bandcamp, it's a 10th anniversary of the uh, of the band itself. So it's a name your price thing. I mean, it's 10 songs. You put in put in some money, man. Don't be cheap. Don't be a chump. Put some money in. Get that. To, and 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 just with uh, with Ninth Evolution, you can find most, if not all, the bands on Bandcamp. You can find them on SoundCloud. You can find them on Spotify, which we will be updating our Hi-Fi Florida uh, podcast playlist. Uh, we also There's also Reverb Nation. There are so many platforms that you can get great local Florida bands. So I've told you, I've given you a warning, go get it. Or see, the other reason why I have Catherine here She's the muscle of the whole shindig, you know, situation now. So I, I don't have to do it. Get it. I, uh, see, I, see, she, see what happens. <laughs> I can just sit back, and I can just like pet my cat, and you know, it's, it's a whole. It, <laughs> oh my god! Um, I was thinking more. Uh, I was thinking more of a double O seven uh, cat. That was more of a, I don't know, more of a Motley Crue cat. I'm scared of that cat. I was thinking like a Dr. Evil type situation. But, I mean, it, either way, it has to be a cat. Cats are, you know, I mean, I've lived with cats. They're okay. But, uh, <laughs> you know, cats are the evil ones. You don't see an evil dog. Exactly. You don't. They're, you know, they're, they're snuggly. Even pit bulls will roll over on their tummy so you can rub their belly. And, you know, they just want to smile. Pit bulls are always smiling and want to play. I mean, except for, you know, the ones that don't. But, you know, we can talk about that. <laughs> okay, so that was ninth evolution agro politico i have my feelings now we're going to go ahead and Catherine will be expressing hers on this one take it away Catherine. yeah so um i was listening to this song um with my fiance and he was saying it kind of reminded him of a little nine inch nails so we started listening to nine inch nails and uh you know there, there's definitely some you know nine inch nails vibes that you can hear in this song um so it's pretty cool song I really liked it a lot. It has like just a really good drive throughout the whole song, you yes, know, like does. a steady kind of beat. 
and uh, they had some tasty breakdowns too. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like kind of like this like new wavy like little breakdown, and I felt like this the song. You know, there it was a very cousin to metal type of song where you know there if you changed a few things if you put some distorted guitars in there you know it could be a metal song and uh you know but it it wasn't with the synth and everything so it's pretty cool um it was kind of like a a spooky song but also like a battle song yeah definitely and uh yeah, like it was like you know I don't know it was I I just thought it was a really cool song when I heard it. Exactly, uh, it's really weird how it's a it's a 2015 song, but it just mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense now with the yeah. with, with the climate that we're going through. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I definitely wanted to put that on there. So that was Agro Politico by Ninth Evolution, and we're going to go to a song that Catherine chose, which I I really should have put this song on first or last. But with all the songs that we had and I I I couldn't I couldn't figure out who it's like having your who's your best baby. You know, you're supposed to say, They're all my babies. You know you're lying. But this was a song that <laughs> you know I thought was really cool. And this was Audio Crisis. Uh tell us about Animal Crisis. A- Animal Audio Crisis with their song Animals at Night. <laughs> You go ahead. I'm getting some water. <laughs> yeah, so Audio Crisis, um, they're a band from Boca, um, and uh, it's a group of guys. This is their uh, single off of their album, What Happened to the Fans. And um, they actually had a, a cool uh, balcony TV video of this on YouTube you can check out. And uh, they have a really great stage presence. The drummer is phenomenal, which you'll hear. And, uh, you know, I mean... My drummer, I, I love him to death. He is my baby, but uh, he looks bored the entire time he's playing. <laughs> he's a great drummer, but he looks bored. So I, I love. Uh, I mean, I think everyone loves a, a good drummer performance. So, um, you know, but definitely check it out. Uh, you know, the group of young guys. I think they've been together for maybe like less than two years. But uh, yeah, like Jason said, really great song. And um, so we'll let you guys listen and, and judge it for yourselves. All right, so go ahead. I, I've done too many intros. You do this intro. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. So this is Audio Crisis, and this is the Hi-Fi Podcast. Ooh, that was good. That was a good one.
from the 2018 CD, What Happened to the Fans? That was Audio Crisis. Their song is called Animals at Night. And you have reached the end of our podcast. This has been a thrilling, exhilarating ride, to tell you the truth. I can't wait to see what happens within the next weeks and months of the Hi-Fi podcast. We are always changing. We're always growing. We always want to put out the best podcast. And Catherine, you made it better. I appreciate you once again. Um, Thank you. And we are going to get ready to close out with The Young Dead and their song Bridewell. I wanted to add some more, some more female uh, estrogen rock to balance out everything, just to let you know that it's about music and music that's great, and we are Florida, we are strong, and everybody here will kick your ass if you okay. So, so this is Angela, Colin, Christian, another Christian, and Pete. So with Christian, if if parents. If you don't want angry kids to play rock and roll, never, never, never name them Christian. I'm just telling you that. I want to ask, is Christian the name of the bassist by chance? Yes, it is. Okay. Every 90% of bassists are named Chris or Christian. My bassist is Chris. And every time we go to a show, we meet someone named Chris. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm the bassist for this band. I don't know what it is, and especially down here, a, a large number of the bassist Chris's are Hispanic as well. So yeah, so if you have, if you know a Hispanic Chris, ask if he plays bass. If not, maybe you should try it. You know, it seems to work out. See, and I, you know, I thought it was just only black women or black people and women who who could play bass, but now we have people named Christian. So, Bass Nation, yeah. be strong. And on that yeah. note, this is the band from Fort Myers. They're going to be um, releasing their new CD very soon in July. There's three songs that are already in the can. That's Wives, Tales, American Sleep, No Master. They recorded it at Six Finger Studios, which is one of the up and coming studios to work at in the mid and South Florida area from their CD, Righteous Violence. This is Bridewell from The Young Dead here on the Hi-Fi podcast.
from the record Righteous Violence that was the Young Dead and Bridewell Catherine any parting shots before we get out of this shindig uh yeah so I mean this song I, I love the vocals that was the first thing that really stuck out to me um you know there's a lot of vibrato and it was kind of uh, hard to describe but like you know it's kind of dragged out but you know uh you know gritty powerful female vocals that I really liked um and uh it almost kind of reminds me of like those old school like metal bands like like with the the metal male vocalist like where it doesn't sound that great but like it sounds like it was done right type of feel I don't know if that Wait, makes what? sense <laughs> <laughs> uh because like my my guitarist loves metal you know so he listens to like his Iron Maiden and Slayer and stuff and I'm just like I can do the music but the vocals I can't do you know oh. so I felt like if, if this girl you know this woman was covering those songs I feel like it would sound phenomenal um but uh, I like that, you know, they had some halftime parts. They went to double time, those transitions. I thought those were done nicely. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think it's been a great show and, uh, you know, had a lot of fun. Good, good, good. And so we're going to end it this evening or this day. It's it's 4 o'clock somewhere. And um, this <laughs> this goes out. <laughs> Again, to my best mate, Hugh Anderson. Um, also, this happens to be kind of like my birthday, too. Um, 20 years ago, I took a dedication ceremony. It was uh, my first degree in, um, let's say, politically correct, uh, the Earth Sciences. And um, so it's both of our birthdays. I, I chose this day, um, my best friend's birthday, to, uh, to take a new path. And, um, so it's a double meaning for me. And, um, I just want to thank you, Hugh. Um, we've been through a whole bunch of shit together. I don't think I could have grown and have been the guy that I have without you around me. Um, to think one day, 20 years ago, 23 years ago, I went to a club to see... Megadeth? Yeah, it was Megadeth and Suicidal Tendencies uh, with a mutual friend of mine, and I met you. And the first things that came out of your mouth was, hey, I got a tab of acid. Do you want one? And here's some orange juice. And ever since then, (laughs) ever since then, we have been thicker than thieves. And if if we get uh, adjoining homes at the old folks' home, we're going to burn it down and I can't wait to do that with you. Uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. You are a great husband, a great father. Enjoy those twins. And I will see you in Cali very soon. So for Catherine, for myself and for the high fi nation, this is, this has been a blast. So yeah, I guess here comes my uh, my tagline, and you have to you have to join me, because this was Jason and Catherine, and this was the high the high, high five podcast. podcast. We'll fix this in the mix. Oh, we're well, good. Take it easy. <laughs> Ow. 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 Ow.